Hi and welcome back to my channel. I'm Tagal. First, I wanted to show you my other main grow space. Uh, this is my uh, plant cage, as I call it, to pr protect my plants from my cat and from the low humidity. So, but today it's maintenance and the hydroponic setup. So the plan uh, is to take some cuttings because some of these plants are really um, taking over and out uh, making the others live in the shadow and for some plants that's okay but yeah uh, it's getting out of control <laughs> so let's start snipping away um, first we need to control this this is Amazonica uh, they have these tendrils that they cling to everything and they really make a mess so I'll say that a cutting could be about this size and then I remove the low, low leaves and the tendrils and I put it in water and the scissors amazonica comes from here can you see yeah um, but it has also claimed possession of another space down here um let's see how can i show you there is a hole for another pot that's unused and down there the scissors amazonica has put the, its roots i think i have a, a slight slug problem down here as you can see there's some holes in the leaves uh, and i'm pretty sure it's not a snail and I know I, I found a slug in here before, so it's probably, it was probably not lonely. And even though I love snails, I'm not a real fan of slugs, so. But here you can really see how beautiful uh, the leaves are on the underside deep purple bug in the color I really love this plant and it seems to love me back <laughs> so this is uh, my Cuphea um, uh, hesopifolia uh, false header and it's really liking this uh, hydroponic setup my plan was to use it for a bonsai, some bonsai projects. Uh, the good thing about this is that it um, um, it roots easily from cuttings, and uh, not all species of my things for bonsai do that. Um, so I'll take some cuttings from this as well. The joy of this setup is really that I can... Uh, really, I don't have to think about it or water... I don't have to water it. I top up the water maybe twice this year. This is the, my first year with it though. Uh, and it's been fertilized two three times maybe uh, I uh, I treat it kind of like aquarium water where you uh, only ex take 
you take out some of the water to put in fresh water and it's kind of the same I've done here I've taken out a liter or two now and then and put in some fertilized water of the same same amount or a little more because of the, the um, evaporation but it's really carefree and you can see the plants are going wild uh, so it's a joy it's really a joy to have this uh, setup okay it's not very pretty from the outside but it's also kind of a backup for my plants because it's I've had very few plants die in here uh, I can think of one and I've exchanged the plants in here uh, quite a lot during this year uh, because some plants I had to take out because they they have too large leaves especially my alocasias they really took off one of them was close to death when I put it in and it did so well it had to be taken out again because it it just made, made too much of a shadow for the other plants my bon bonsai project didn't go very well uh, it uh, dried out too fast so I think I should not look at or uh, aim at a real bonsai soil for them. I think they just need potting soil uh, or maybe even standing in a tray. So, so I have to make a new bonsai. Um, And because this, it's not really a tree species, um, it's a shrub or more, uh, or not even that. So um, it takes a long time for the stem to get thick. And although I'm not thinking of making them into large bonsai, only a small show hand size, but still the trunk is not um, wide enough so what I might do is to take several uh, twigs and twine them around each other uh, so that they look like a really weathered tree in the end so that's a project to come So now that I've cleaned up the false header and the scissors, you can see how well my Hoyas are doing in here. I usually struggle with Hoyas because I water them too much. Um, so this setup is really uh, uh, yeah, a lifesaver for the plants. Um, and for great satisfaction for me so that I can be and I can be able to care for Hoyas because I do like them uh, this one is a uh, Hoya Kemengiana I bought a large one uh, that I still have I think they uh, like a bit more water than other Hoyas as I managed to keep the uh, other one in soil alive uh, but they also like it here and you see they grow this long like branches and they don't really try to uh, to climb so I think this one is ready to make a cutting as well because how long do you want it to get in here um, it's probably going to drop a lot of leaves so there there was a lot of sap and I don't think I react badly to that but 
I just don't like to get it all over my hands just in case so that needs to dry off a little before I put it into water and you can see yeah lots of sap try to avo I'll try to avoid that when I continue my cleanup it's also branched off with a little one here I'll let it stay as you can see the low, lower leaves seem to drop really easily and I'm not sure why um, I have this problem when I grow them in soil as well so I'm not sure why but it seems to be growing fine and new leaves stay on and so on so this one was with this long uh, or small narrow leaves is one that I it's not very long ago it was only a cutting now it has this original growing tip and made another one on the same branch and it also made this really long one here and this needs to go I think this will make a nice cutting there seems to be some nubs for roots here, so I cut it here. Another one I got in the same, uh, at the same um, time, also as a cutting, is this one. And it was probably mislabeled. Uh, it, it was labeled uh, Quinquenervia, and it's probably not very unlikely to be that it has a really thick stem and seems to like this setup a lot when it's um, exposed to very bright light it gets purplish reddish kind of tint to the leaves and i like that a lot now that i read i used to have a really strong light in the setup but i was worried the light was too strong um, because well especially this one got really purple now it's turned back to green for the most part but you can see some this leaf is really red uh, they seem to grow a lot better with the, when the light is not that strong so Although I do like the purplish color of the leaves, I'll um, probably save that for when I grow them outside of the hydroponics in soil or in other setups. Maybe this could be a cutting or it's too early as well. Because especially this one, since it was mislabeled, uh, I'm really curious about what it actually is um, and the only way to really find out is to get it to bloom and there's no space for it to get to blooming size in here so this will for my hoyas this will only be a backup uh, and then take cuttings and grow them on in other kind of setups I'm experimenting with self-watering at the moment I think that I also take a cutting of this ficus I have going here this is my version of uh, growing a tree in the ground for a while to make a thick stem I also have some ficus pumila in here one of the few places where I can grow this successfully I also have a small baby of a strawberry begonia in here but it's just staying there it's not growing here I have um, uh, some string of turtles peperomia prostata and um, they are doing good although they are, these, they are rather succulent so you would think that maybe a water setup wouldn't be right for them but it seems to do very well also here is my only Selaginella 
så lägger jag lägga på det. Det är gott att se. I love selaginellas, but uh, they are usually not for sale in Norway. And this was an exception. I hope in the future there are more species available. So that one's doing well, despite the cat hairs and the debris. Here I have a palea. Here's uh, palea glauca. So the paleas and the peperomias are doing good in here. I have, I usually not very successful with the, with the peperomias because uh, again, I water them too much. Oh, I, and I should mention this one. It's a tiny little uh, Sansevieria uh, bouncel, the starfish Sansevieria. Um, not growing much, but it's not dying. So, um, anything else? Oh, and I haven't talked about this in at all. This is Stenante Burle Maxi, and it's the and here's the uh, Amagri uh, variety. Also, my uh, Pelionia Pulchra is doing okay in here. Nice not really taking off but doing okay um i think it uh still thinks the light is too strong um i noticed that in the strong light uh, it gets really dark leaves while in uh, lower light it's mm, growing more and the leaves are uh, have more patterns on them. How many plants, different species are there? Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I may have missed some. I'm not sure, but probably 15 different species in this very confined space, little, literally. It's easy to make and easy to keep. It grows this much just from the tap of water with added fertilizer maybe uh, three times this year. A lot of growth with a lot, a very little input of nutrients and uh, well they have constant access to water and also artificial light. I'm just very happy with the setup and fortunately my plants are too. Thanks for watching, hope to see you next time, bye!